academics and GPA are so important in College Football 25. So, pop quiz. How many of you are ready for the new game? A lot of creators have been posting early access beta gameplay, and if you've been soaking that up, you should be ready for Monday's pop quiz. But either way, when the game goes live, no sweat. I got you covered with the final checklist of College Football 25. Or as I like to call it, your new study guide for the new game. We are gonna cruise through this study guide in rapid fire action, so if there are any items you wanna talk further about, head down below to the comment section and start a conversation there. Wear and tear an important new feature to manage in this game. It's active on all 22 players and it's uniquely attached to every limb and body part of a player. The more hits and wear and tear your guide takes, the more damage done to their attributes. So it's all about player management and rep management. The option game. The option is a huge part of college football and it was apparent in NCAA 14. The biggest difference in the new game is the adjustments to pitch strength. Now in RPOs and options, you can execute a quick pitch or a strong pitch depending on how long you hold it down. Let's talk about shells. This is a pretty big detail because they removed base alignment and instead are allowing you to disguise your coverages. To become a master of the gridiron, it's going to take some time to get past the learning curve, but you're going to need to learn how to mix up your looks to confuse the opposing quarterback. Impact players and player abilities are completely different than NCAA 14. Important call us, there are over 80 abilities which you can sink your time into, but at a high level, it splits between mental and physical. And then go ahead and break down those groups even further with bronze, silver, gold, and platinum tiers. Coach Vision seems like a simple addition, but you do really get a lot of important pre-snap information from wear and tear, composure and confidence, abilities, and matchups. So have fun digesting all of this information on a play-by-play -play basis. Home field advantage, that directly correlates with toughest places to play. It gives the home team a dynamic advantage with the composure in the crowd kicking in, causing the opposing team to have trouble making audibles, making plays. It adds a huge difference to the game. There was a short note about revamped hot routes in a deep dive, but nonetheless, it is a huge addition, allowing all quarterbacks and players access to 12 unique routes. On the topic of passing, let's also quickly call out the passing meter added to the game there's blue yellow and red you want to get it as blue as possible to be extremely accurate on your throws however if you hit red you still might get it there it's just a less of a chance now i mentioned earlier defensive shells would take a learning curve well so will the switch stick this is a brand new feature that should allow a lot more control on the defense. In a nutshell, if you get caught on your defensive line, just flick that stick into coverage. This next 134 play styles is self-explanatory. There are 134 FBS teams, all their playbooks uniquely represented in the game, like Wake Forest Slow Mesh or Texas Tech in their uber fast tempo. You'll see it. This next one's all about kicking. It's actually really hard. There are two meters to worry about. That first one for accuracy and the second one for power. This next checkbox is all about presentation and it really does enhance the gameplay from the commentary team teams to all of the traditions to the crowd chants and reactions even mascots in real life animals in the game i think they said there's only 40 mascots i believe at launch here so that is the only concerning part in my book since there are 134 teams and most of them do have a mascot however uh the, just the in-game atmosphere in the gameplay is extremely enhanced by how well done the presentation looks. Now that we have a solid understanding of gameplay, let's hit some rapid fire dynasty action. Remember coaching archetypes and their backstory starts with the motivator, recruiter, or tactician storyline. Just like player abilities, coaches also have these abilities. You want to continue to spend points to go down a certain path as well as upgrade the tier of your ability. A really interesting part here brought to life in dynasty that wasn't as exuberant in NCAA 14 is the coaching carousel. It kicks off off during conference championship week. And if you're hitting that carousel window, they evaluate on level, scheme, archetype, pipeline, and your prestige. All about finding the right fit, and the same can be said for managing coordinators, so make sure you find the right offense and defensive coordinators you can hire and fire, but you can't control the path they go down with their abilities. Staged recruiting is a whole lot different than NCAA 14. Three main phases, discovery, pitch, and close. Discovery is all about learning about the prospect. Stage two is when the recruit narrows it down to their top five. You should know enough information about them to either soft sell or hard sell based on their deal breakers and what interests them the most. The final step is closing. That's where you schedule the visit and hope you can get a verbal commitment. A really interesting tidbit to keep an eye on are the recruiting pipelines. They've broken down states into more regions and even cities. And then additionally, they're breaking it down by prospect generation, 
big physical receivers out of the DFW type area, and then speedsters out of the Florida area. Good to see accurate representation of the regions, and just like that, the transfer portal is also in the game, which is a rapid fire four week recruiting process. Essentially treat it just like the high school recruiting process. Prospects that had their deal breaker not met by their team will hit the portal. Player development can be influenced by abilities, but there are also specific player development traits. Be on the lookout for prospects that can get normal, impact, star, or elite progression. And obviously, the higher up you go this list, the better they will grow as an overall threat to your team. That was player development. Now player management is sort of along the same lines. You'll be able to manage what skill groups they put their points into, which is rather than an individual attribute, a group of attributes that all complement each other. The mental and physical abilities that each player has, and of course, managing wear and tear, all essential elements of the player management process. The college football landscape moves fast, and now we have 12 team playoffs in the game, which were obviously not a part of any of the previous editions. Speaking of the landscape moving fast there are so many custom ways to play every conference with their new realignment is set in the game but heck you could go ahead and reconfigure the conferences to your heart's delight lastly i want to touch on team builder and it's speculated this deep dive will happen on monday but i do know a few things 16 teams can be imported into an online private dynasty there are over 150 different customizable options for stadiums and it should be fully able to upload your logos graphics and everything to a separate ea website just like the old game so uh, don't worry it is on the way and it's a huge part of this channel and i'm sure a lot of you are really looking forward to that as well so can't wait road to glory another iconic really fun mode brought back to college football 25 as it should be this time you get to start off with four different journeys and unfortunately yes no high school football as you see here in the image you choose from being a five star four star three star or two star prospect and that directly affects your overall in progression player swag important to call out a lot of customizable options out there i mean look at this man Caius king here he has the hoodie the crop top the sleeve the armband wow what a sight to see on the field, huh? You go through a little prep interview and then it's signing day where you get to choose your team. And as you can see here, Caius chose to go with South Carolina. In Roads of Glory, academics actually have a big role to play in your weekly management. You're gonna have to determine how serious you are on hitting them books and acing your exams. In fact, you have to maintain a minimum GPA of 2.0 to keep playing on the field. It's also tied to mental abilities and coach trust. With the added pressure of maintaining your GPA, there'll be plenty of scenarios and dilemmas to challenge you along the way. So think twice before going to that party instead of studying. NIL deals are a significant significant part of Road to Glory and there will be gameplay bonuses and off-field bonuses attached to them. So be strategic with what deals you accept, how much energy you put into it because they will have a real impact on your RTG. Essentially here you can tell Road to Glory is all about managing the decisions and situations you're in as a player, not only during the game, but outside the game. One of the in-game impacts is wear and tear, of course, right? So you're not going to be able to have the same effect like Dynasty road to glory they will not automatically recover so you're gonna have to be responsible managing your reps so you're gonna need to be strategic in game as well thinking about the decisions you make during a game like scrambling and avoiding big hits xp gains are next on the list in practice is definitely one of the main ways where you earn coach trust and get some additional points additionally xp is earned by completing in-game goals and once you reach 100 percent on a progression bar you earn a skill point to use towards improving your abilities so xp is broken down by gameplay and training it's the in-game performance as well as out of game performance huge note to caveat no off-season progression play calling directly related to coach trust in the beginning you'll always see more than likely that one play to choose and then you have additionally a limited number of re-rolls where you can get a few extra plays keep working down the path of coach trust you'll soon be in control now going into the transfer portal just like in real life you can go ahead and enter and find a new home that might be a better fit for you when you come to the end of your college career you can go ahead and export it to madden 25 and continue in superstar mode if you wish all right now can we jump into everyone's favorite mode ultimate team all right i'm just messing around i think ultimate team can be worth a look i'm not going to be jumping into it day one but no shame for anyone that wants to check it out right off the rip there are some interesting things coming to it like the nfl pa partnership where they'll actually have real life in-game 
players like Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, they can all be in the college game through this new licensing agreement. Now, I'm not gonna explain a whole lot what Ultimate Team is. It's a lot like Madden. It's where you collect a bunch of cards, build a dream team or roster of all your favorite players or the best players out there from legends, current players, active NFL players, and you piece them together here right in this lineup. Then you go ahead and complete objectives and play offline and online modes. That's it in a nutshell, but I also wanted to highlight these next few things. The 134 team chemistry note is crazy right here. Player items will have access to all 134 teams, so you can go ahead and build your dream team and essentially use anyone to get the max chemistry bonuses. There are a lot of abilities in college football. You can mix and match them on a lot of different cards in Ultimate Team. You have to pay points, and you don't want to exceed a point threshold so you don't get too cheap easy, but you at least have enough variety to mix it up how you want to play. These last three, I'm essentially going to hit on the same breath, program specials, events, and field pass. Throughout the year, they'll have new updates and programs to engage with, which will bring new cards and players like this ultimate team, Brock Bowers. Conference Stories of the Week is an example of a program they've already announced. As new programs come and go, so will live events, which change up the nature of the game, giving you unique challenges like tug of war or OT only things that they've brought in, in previous Ultimate Teams, but they'll also spice it up, College Edition here. And then as you're playing through programs, as you're playing through live events, offline and online challenges, you'll be able to power up the Field Pass, which gives you new packs, coins, XP. And with that, bang, bang, there's a little bit of something for everyone in this study guide. So you should be ready to go for Monday's launch. I hope you're ready to ace that quiz when the game goes live, but all jokes aside, I hope you enjoyed and got a good high level overview of pretty much the most impactful, the main features, the main information, everything up to date in College Football 25 right before launch. So keep soaking it up with your boy King Sponge and I'll see you with daily uploads for the next couple weeks. So stay tuned, subscribe, 